Art Nerds. So today I want to show you a goodie I picked up while I was in Japan last year. You guys might recognize the label, but I bet you haven't seen these in U.S. stores. So I have a confession to make. These have sat unopened for about a year. And I think they've evaporated a little bit. Now the reason I think they've evaporated is they come with droppers and they just don't really want to drip dropper. Drip dropper. So what I was thinking about doing, I was thinking about swatching them as they are in their current state and then adding a little bit of water, shaking them up really good and uh, kind of retesting them. And I guess I would use this as like my fill line. I think that's a good place to start. So I have three colors. I only picked up three colors because I wasn't sure if I was going to like these and I didn't want to invest a lot of money in art supplies that I was never going to use. And we have Bonnie Blue, we have White, and we have Flesh Number Two. And I'm going to do a little bit of digging and see if I can't come up with some more information for you guys about these unusual paints. So I guess I regret not buying more of these because I can't find anything about them online right now. I'm going to send this off to a couple of my friends who are really, really good at digging, see if they can't dig something up. But in the meantime, I am going to do my swatches. We're going to add some water and we're going to re-swatch. So we have here an Arteza watercolor block or watercolor pad, sorry. So it is cellulose-based watercolor. I've been using it for my swatches. And what I think these probably are is a combination of Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydrus watercolor. And it is probably intended to be used like nicker paints or like gouache or like tempera paints. So an opaque sort of painting solution. And I believe they're probably pre-mixed just for convenience. Now that's a lot of assumptions to make. There is a shaker inside. So these have sat for a really long time. So it's taken some effort to get them going again and I will get all three going before we start swatching. Let's see if a vigorous shakedown has improved the consistency any. They are still incredibly thick and don't really seem to want to work with the eyedropper which is why I think they've probably evaporated somewhat in the bottle. So This one's looking pretty full. I will Go ahead and get my swatch on. And that looks like it is pretty dang opaque. Adding some water has not really improved our ability to use the dropper. So I've noticed with the Peach Martin's dropper based paints or pigment based paints, sorry, they tend to be a little bit bulky when it comes to using droppers. So that has improved consistency. Y'all heard that shaker ball go and it's really going to pollute your water. All right, let's try blending it out. Wow, it seems to dry really quickly. Doesn't necessarily want to move a whole lot. Take some scrubbing and I'm using a pretty stiff bristle brush here and it's still taking some scrubbing to get it moving. So I'm gonna go clean out my cup of water. I wonder if this has a solvent in it. Oh, it smells like it does, and I added water to it. I'm so dumb. Oh well, live and learn and make mistakes and ruin things, right? 
So I guess I'm going to do the same thing with the other two bottles. I can't tell what the solvent is. All I can do is tell it's a solvent, probably an alcohol-based solvent, which would be why it dries very, very, very quickly. So if you know what this is and you think I am a complete moron for having added water or for how I'm using it or for how I am assuming this product works, feel free to shout at me in the comments below because I know when I've made a mistake. But it, Oh, see this one has gotten really, really thick and cakey. It needs something added to it to reconstitute it. So if you guys know what solvent is being used let me know that as well it's probably too late too late for these bottles but knowledge is power and even when I'm wrong I like to knowledge new things that's right I'm gonna make y'all cringe I'm gonna add some water into it I mean it's definitely gotten chonky it is a chonk so something had to be done. And this is on me for having waited so long. Giving it a really good shaka shaka. Now, the thing is, I feel like my guess, I should have smelled it before adding water for sure, but I feel like my guess wasn't bad because... P.H. Martins makes a lot of water-based, water-soluble products. They make the hydrous watercolors. They make the radiant watercolors. They make Spectralite, which I believe is acrylic-based, like very thin acrylic ink. They make calligraphy inks. They make India inks. Those all have a water base to them. Ooh, that turns yellow if you blend it out with water. also mean you probably cannot reconstitute these. Alright, last one. Our regular old white. And I think I got the dropper working on this one. No, none of these droppers are working. This is what happens when you let Becca import things. One is not as opaque as the other two it seems. And yes, please go ahead and cringe. I would be. If I knew what this was and I was watching somebody else ruin it, I would be screaming at my... I'd have to turn off the video because I'd be screaming at the camera. Does it help that I am aware that I'm a fool? Does that make it less cringy? I don't know. But as I'd mentioned earlier, I thought this was basically going to be their already opaque product, the Bleed Proof White, with some color additive because they recommend mixing in or mixing the hydrous with a little bit of white, like um, titanium white, to make gouache light colors. So I cannot use this dropper to apply to the desk because it's pretty gummy. What I want to do is I want to see how blendable these are. And this might not even be the right use case. You might be, these might be intended where you buy like a million of them and you intermix between very closely related colors, kind of like Copic. I was also thinking I could use these as like watercolor accents.
I mean, I feel like this is how we're intended to get lighter colors, is just mixing in white, which would make them similar to gouache. I personally am not a big fan of gouache because I have a lot of difficulty with it. So perhaps I'm not the best one to speak to that. But it does seem like there is an element of intermixability designed into these. Really like to have more information about them, so I look forward to hopefully some of my friends are able to dig something up. Okay, let's mix the blue and the pink. We're gonna get kind of a, a zombie gray. And I should have bought some darker colors too. I guess I should have bought more, but considering I let them evaporate on me, perhaps this is why I don't get to have nice things. They're interesting though. So I'm going to let these dry completely and I'm going to see if they can be reconstituted with some water. So according to my friend Heidi, who is a genius and can read kanji, these are actually acrylics. I picked these up from ARC Art Supplies in Kyoto and they were sold amongst the watercolor supplies, so I assumed they were something like gouache. It does still smell like solvent, although to be honest, I've never known acrylics to utilize a solvent rather than to utilize a water base. And the only acrylic product that I'm aware of that Dr. P.H. Martins makes is their Spectralite liquid acrylics. So I wonder if these are similar formulation but with something that would make them opaque. Now there are darker colors available of this, at least I remember there being darker colors available, but I cannot find them online. I've even tried searching Dr. P.H. Martin's acrylic and I've been to their site again and I can't find anything about these unusual art supplies. So the jury is still out. I've still got one more friend left to report back, maybe two more friends left to report back. And we'll see if Heidi can't dig up some more information as well. Anyway, even just learning that these are acrylic is exciting because that's very different from how acrylics are usually offered here in the U.S. Liquid acrylics are kind of a newer thing. There are liquid acrylics available, but most of them tout how transparent they are rather than how opaque they are. So my friend Kabocha, who has the strongest Google foo of anyone I know, was able to find a few links for these on Amazon Japan. So I have those in the description. Kabocha also sent me some Google Translate, which will shed a little bit of light on these products. It is a pigment-based opaque color ink added with an acrylic resin, which becomes water resistant when dried. Slightly settled color, suitable for print originals. So I assume by slightly settled color, they mean maybe a matte finish. So it's an acrylic with a matte finish that is water, water pliable, I guess, while still wet. But once we let it dry, it's going nowhere. What an interesting product. I wonder why this isn't available on offer in the US. Because um, Dr. P.H. Martins is an American company and the products are produced for the most part in the US. In fact, look, look, can you focus? This one will. See? I don't know. Kabocha also found these swatches for Spectralite colors, and you guys can see the light flesh tints up there towards the top. Excellent sleuthing, Kabocha. I cannot link this since it was sent to me via Discord and I'd have to rehost it, but I definitely wanted to show you guys. So Kabocha's amazing Google Foo continues. These are apparently part of the Spectralite line and Spectralite has been discontinued. They're not going to be selling it in the US anymore and eventually they're probably not going to be selling it in Japan anymore either. So these are part of a discontinued line. Now in the links below, I have a link to the Dr. P.H. Martin Spectralite private collection of liquid acrylic inks, but that's a different color collection entirely. And I'm going to link both in the collection, uh, both in the, <laughs> in the 
description is the correct word, both in the description below so that you can check them out. I'm not seeing any of the really um, opaque, really pastel colors like these, but it wouldn't surprise me if these were sold in Japan and not in the US because they're marketed as being for comics in the Amazon JP description. So there's more of a comic culture there, especially more of a traditional media, physical media comic collection over there. So it really wouldn't surprise me if these were specially marketed for that particular market. So you guys might notice they're using the same bottles as the smaller hydrous watercolors. I did not see them available in larger bottles. They do not seem to be packaged for larger bottles. So I want to thank Heidi and Kabocha so much for helping me out with this. I really appreciate it. Teamwork makes the dream work. And I want to thank those of you who have left comments down below sharing even more information about this product. I want to thank you guys as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you again really soon. Don't forget to check the description for links if you're interested in learning more about this product. If you like what you see, make sure you subscribe because I'm going to be continuing to work my way through the art supplies and stationery supplies that I picked up while in Japan. So if you're interested in unique, unusual art supplies not offered in the US, that is definitely something you should be on the lookout for. And you can find those in my art supplies from around the world and Japanese art supplies playlist. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye guys.